Bruce, um, according to your work, our early years are really important to the patterns basically that we create in our subconscious, uh, subconscious minds. Uh, and that basically can affect us later on in our lives. So what were the early years like for you growing up in, in New York? Well, uh, I grew up like now I find most families, a lot of dysfunction in the family of some kind or other. Uh, and you have to recognize that a child, uh, l let's understand why we have to do recording of uh, programs in the first seven years of life. Uh, uh, simply this, you buy a brand new computer and you open it up and you can turn it on. But if you don't have a program in there, then what good is it? You can't do anything with it. So first you have to install programs. And then once you have the program, you can open a program and you can modify it and do whatever you want later on. But without any program, uh, there's nothing there. So uh, a child is born, the computer brain <laughs> is ready to work. Uh, but it needs programs. And so the first seven years of our life, the brain is operating at a lower level than consciousness. In, in EEG, electroencephalograph terms, uh, the brain is operating at a vibrational frequency called theta. Theta is imagination. That's why kids below seven can mix the real world and the imaginary world. Uh, they're, they're on a broom. The mother says, give me the broom. The kid is saying, what broom? Because he's on a horse. And he's, you know, it's a real horse, but in that imagination. Or a tea party where they pour nothing into the cup and then they drink the nothing and say, oh, how wonderful the tea was. Uh, that is theta in operation. <laughs> But theta is also hypnosis. And so the significance is the last trimester of pregnancy through age seven, the brain is operating predominantly in theta, uh, theta being hypnosis, meaning what? A child through age seven is observing the world like a video camera. Everything they see, everything they hear is going into the uh, brain, not into the conscious mind because that's not functioning yet. It's being downloaded as programs in the subconscious mind. And this allows us to get off the ground. Uh, in other words, uh, if, if you say, how many rules does it take to be a functional member of a family or a community? My God, you'd have to have a book with how many different ways to respond to the world and all that. I say, how does an infant going to learn the rules so it can be a functional member? And the answer is, it doesn't have to read anything. All it has to do is see and hear. Hmm and it will download all the programs. Uh, this course would have been great in college if we could have used that a lot. It would save a lot of time for us, but uh, first seven years, this is the principle. And so the significance is, where do we get the basic programs that we operate from? And the answer is in the first seven years, we download these behaviors by observing other people copying theirs. Mm. So we look at our mother and our father, observe their behaviors, uh, and that becomes a program of how to be a mother and a father and a community and all that. Uh, and the problem, as we now know, is 70% or so of those programs are disempowering programs or beliefs that limit us or sabotage us. Uh, and, and they were put in because the people we copied them from didn't know any better anyway. So we, mm. if they had a dysfunction, then we copied that dysfunction. Uh, and it's this profound. Um, they looked at the fate of children adopted into families where there's cancer running in a family. And what did they find out is that the adopted child will end up with the same probability of getting, getting the family cancer uh, mm. as any of the natural siblings. But the program says, well, wait a minute. Uh, the adopted child came from totally different genetics. I go, yep. And why is this relevant? The cancer wasn't in the genes. The cancer was a, a, a problem of programs that were disempowering and sabotaging that we acquired by being in that family. So uh, there are two minds, so we need to get this right away fixed up. And that is there's a conscious mind, which is connected to our personal identity. And there's a subconscious mind, which by definition is just a record playback program. So the first seven years, I put programs in the subconscious mind. But after age seven, I get to use the conscious mind, which is the great creative mind. And I go, well, this is really great. I can then create what the hell I want. I don't have to follow the program. I go, yeah, that's true. Except uh, people don't realize this is that when we are thinking, the conscious mind lets go of the control of what's going on in the world because the thought is on the inside. So if I say, hey, tell, tell me what you're doing on uh, uh, Thursday at two o'clock, if, if you're looking around for the answer, I go, the answer's not outside, the answer is inside. 
Mm -hmm. am I doing on Thursday? So I'm thinking. Well, the problem is the moment I'm thinking, I'm not paying attention to what's going on. So it's interesting. If you're walking down the street and you have a thought, it doesn't mean you walk into a tree or walk off the sidewalk. Or if you're driving the car and you're mm -hmm. thinking, it doesn't mean you crash your car. I go, well, then it, who's paying attention if my conscious mind is going inwards? Who's looking at the road? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it turns out subconscious is autopilot. So as we think, any job that's going on, any awareness that's necessary for our survival is now handled automatically, autopilot, subconscious. Well, that's where the programs that I got from other people are. So when I am thinking, I'm not playing my behavior that I want. When I'm thinking, I default to the program in the subconscious. Hmm. And I go, yeah, but that program wasn't my wishes and my desires for life. That was just copying my parents. So here's the the big most important lesson for everyone out there to listen at this moment. And that is this, we are only conscious about 5% of the day, 95% of the day, our conscious mind is busy thinking about what happened yesterday, what's going to happen in the future, what I need to do, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I go, yeah, but that means then 95% of the day, you're not operating from your creative conscious mind, which has your wishes and desires, health, happiness, relationships, great job. I say, oh, that's conscious wishes, mm. conscious desires. I go, but that's only 5% of the day. 95% of the day, we are operating from the programs. And, mm -hmm. and here's the part that really screws us up is because conscious mind is not observing as we're playing these subconscious programs, then if we have a negative program and we're expressing it, conscious mind doesn't see it. Conscious mm. mind's busy thinking. So whatever program is coming out 95% of the day, we don't really observe it. Uh, and uh, I could summarize it with a story I've said, I've given 30 years the same story because it <laughs> works. And that is this, uh, you have a friend, you know your friend's behavior very well, and you happen to know your friend's parent. And one day you see your friend is expressing the same behavior as their parent. Uh, and then you, so you want to tell your friend, of course, you know, it's like, Hey, Bill, you're just like your dad. And then you back away from Bill because Bill goes totally ballistic, as Gareth understands right now. Bill goes ballistic. How can you compare me to my dad? I'm nothing like my dad. And everyone laughs. Why? Because they've had this experience. And I say, two points, most profound story in the whole world, just from that. And point number one, everyone else can see that Bill behaves like his dad. It's Bill who doesn't see it. I go, oh. How does that happen? I go, because A, he downloaded that behavior in the first seven years of his life. B, 95% of the day he's thinking and automatically playing this behavior. And C, because his conscious mind's not watching the behavior, it's inside thinking, Bill doesn't even see the behavior. Mm. So, and, and so basically that's the point. Uh, he, he says, I'm nothing like my dad and everyone else can see that he is. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that's because we play these programs all day. So that's profound point number one. Now, everybody get ready, sit down, hold on, because <laughs> profound point number two is this. We are all Bill. <laughs> Every <laughs> one of us is doing this all day long. And so this is why problems arise in life, because you have great wishes and desires. And then you try to, you know, get to those wishes and desires. And then you find life is a struggle and it's hard and stuff doesn't come so easy and you sweat over making it happen. Uh, and then we, we look at the world and go, gosh, I wanted to be successful, but apparently the universe isn't helping me because I didn't make it. Hmm. Uh, and then I say, stop for a second. Guess what? The universe was going to give you everything you were thinking about. The unfortunate part is 95% of the day you were operating from a negative belief, just like Bill. And 95% of the day you are, uh, you know, if you don't have a program supporting what you want, the existing program will sabotage what you want. Hmm. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold mountain range. Gotta be quick, so.